Yes. Everyone wants to talk about Darnold, but I agree with you. I mean, Brian Flores, say what you want about him and how he handled Tua. That dude can coach defense. Anywhere he goes, that defense is good. They've given up 30 points in three games. They're good. I saw a lot of I people think. saying with Brian Flores, and man, this happens fast in that league to Mike McDaniel. A whole bunch of people were looking to join that class action suit with Brian Flores yesterday. I mean, it is interesting that the Mike McDaniel thing, I'm not turning on him, but he gets compared to Kyle Shanahan. Whenever Kyle Shanahan has lost his quarterback, the next quarterback comes in and you're amazed that, wow, this offense still kind of seems to run. Without Tua, the Mike McDaniel offense, maybe they've just had really bad quarterbacks. Maybe C.J. Beathard, who Kyle Shanahan has had, is better than no. Skylar Thompson. No. And no. It's just, no. I don't know, for, no. for the Mike McDaniel genius – we got to see a little bit more. I get it. You need the quarterback. But show me a little bit more with the backup quarterback. We are not at the point that we're longing for C.J. Beth. No, I'm just That's saying. That's not what this is supposed to be. If this offense is such a well-oiled machine, if, like, if, if McDaniel's running that Kyle Shanahan offense, why does that offense look better with backup quarterbacks it's than gonna this turn. one It's going to turn. It's turning already. It's turning. That's it's, it. But it's this week is a three. construction, bro. I, do, I don't understand how they keep finding themselves in this position. This is a Dolphins construction problem that we figured out three years ago. Right? Like, or two seasons ago. When Tua went down, the plan was Teddy Bridgewater. And then he went down, and then we had Skylar Thompson, and you learned Skylar Thompson wasn't good enough. And you could say he almost beat the Bills in Buffalo in a playoff game, but he didn't. And you learned that's not enough if you lose your starting quarterback. So what do they do? They go out and they bring in Mike White. And then Tua doesn't get hurt last year. And then they said, you know what? Mike White. We don't want to pay you. So if something happens, we have Skylar Thompson. He beats you out for the job. And yet again, we're learning Skylar Thompson is not good enough if Tua goes down. Let me, let me. And then there's no backup plan. Tim Boyle is the plan there. if something happens to Skylar Thompson, who himself wasn't good enough. And, like, obviously this is Monday morning quarterback. But, like, you see the quarterbacks that are out there thriving, right? And if this system is so great and anyone can just fit in this system, which is what everybody tells us, two is not good enough, you just plug in the right quarterback and it can work. Sam Darnold looks like the MVP of the league right now. You couldn't get someone like a Sam Darnold to be a serviceable backup when you know that Skylar Thompson wasn't good enough. Like, there was no plan for Tua going down, which I don't understand because he has the injury history. There's always that fear with him. Last year, he was clean the entire season, so you assume he's never going to get hurt again, and Skylar Thompson's the backup plan? All of your criticism is going to be echoed by all of South Florida today. The only place I would pause and tell you, ah, hold on just a second, is that he did beat out Mike White and that Bills playoff game you were talking about. If it's this hard to play quarterback in that league for the good quarterbacks, they look like they stink. The ones who don't get reps are going to need a minute. Like, you've seen what training camp has done to everybody else. I don't believe in Skylar Thompson either, but one game, first game, when you haven't been the one getting all the reps, like, don't tell me you can go to Buffalo and put up 35 points with that offense, and you can go to Seattle and not have anything for offense, and the difference between those two players at quarterback is reps. It's the same player. It's, but one of them is getting a month of preparation and the other one's getting a week. But you know he's not good enough from the time that he was quarterback. Like, you knew that's not he enough never to be win your a playoff right. game. Like, you right. knew that. Okay, but the man making the assessment on that, you trusted two weeks ago to make those assessments. The, the Shan Shanahan made that assessment on Brock Purdy. Like, that, that's – if do you trust your coach or don't you? I don't. I don't trust my coach because he's shown that he can't do things without Tua. Like, has he not? What has he done without Tua? Here, nothing. Here, they the closest they've come we're, we're was to losing a playoff in. game in right. Buffalo. I mean, it is fair criticism to say, hey, you have this quarterback. He's signed. You believe in him. We get that. But he's also prone to injury, right? So you might want to have a better backup. It's what the, it's what the Jet fans went through last year when Aaron went down. I, I know, uh, right. Stugatz, and I, I don't want to do the backup quarterback show just because what I'm telling you when I say – well, do you trust him, or is your trust so flimsy that it loses one time at Seattle and you're like, no, it doesn't know what he's doing in terms of quarterback selection? Because sure, right. it seemed to me like you trusted him the last two seasons to be able to do offensive evaluation. But it's not one time. 
right? It's been every time Tua has gone out, the season has somewhat fallen apart, right? And like, if you look at the schedule, the Dolphins have winnable games coming up. They have the Titans, they have the Patriots, they have the Colts, the Cardinals. You don't really know, and then they have the Bills. So like, you very well could get back up to five hundred here, right, with the Dolphins, and then convince yourself like, okay, like things are fine. Like, Scholar Times is fine. He just needed some reps, and it's because you're going up against bad teams. A- am I crazy for thinking that they already admitted that they know that the room is not good enough? Like they could have signed somebody that was just a player to put in that room. They signed Tyler Huntley. And look, Tim Boyle has never been a good quarterback at any level of football. He's never <laughs> shown amazing. you anything. It's an amazing stat line for Tim Boyle. His entire career, he's never been good at quarterback. I'm fairly certain that once Huntley gets the playbook, because he's been here for about five minutes, he's going to climb up that depth chart. I don't think that there is a person that evaluates in the NFL that would tell you, maybe outside of the staff because he's just more familiar with the offense, but from a talent level, Skylar Thompson is not considered better than Tyler Huntley. I do think that they've already admitted to the world that they need to get better well, at Bill, that position. But Billy's point, though, when he talks about structural, is you could have had Huntley long before now. You could have gotten before him the whatever season. reps yeah, yes. it is. But I, I really don't want to do the backup quarterback show because I do think that what we're thinking when they sign Huntley to the practice squad is, oh, how fun, an athletic quarterback to go along with those skill guys. What happened to the Dolphins yesterday in Seattle was a betting line surprise because everybody thought McDaniel was going to be able to travel. All the games are close. It's it's Every game is going to have Atlanta throwing into the end zone against the Chiefs at the end because they're all protecting the football and trying to throw for 200 yards. You got Dallas as a total finesse team. They can't run the ball, can't stop the run, and Jerry Jones spends the whole offseason putting money into the offensive and defensive lines and telling C.D. Lamb and Dak Prescott to hold on, hold on, hold on. And they can't stop the run, and they can't run the football because of what it is the training camp has done to these people because we're still sort of in, in reps mode on the first three seasons and we're attacking, attaching stakes to it because you guys know that Miles Garrett yesterday is playing and they're already saying, they're like, he's got two bad feet, he's got two, but he says he's going to wait until the end of the season to handle it. That's a long, that's a long the time end of from the now. Season. Yes, he's going to take surgery 15 games from now. <laughs> the idea that injuries get built into the structure of what it is that you've built and Tua gets hurt, we can talk all you want. They have no answer for that amount of their payroll Going away, all you're trying to do is like win two of the four games, two of the five games, two of the six games. Right. You're just trying to get to the season to matter halfway through because you don't want everybody limping through this before he gets back. But think about what you're counting on. You're counting on a, on a guy who's visiting neurologists. Like you don't. Well, how- that's Billy's point, Dan. Why not have Joe Flacco? Why not get Russell Wilson? Why not inquire about one of those guys? Jimmy so G. in the event that Tua goes down. You have a backup, so you don't have to miss a beat, potentially. They tried tried that the previous year, and their salary cap situation is such that they took a gamble and said, we don't want to commit millions of dollars at a backup position because we want to allocate that money elsewhere. And they lost the gamble. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.